Angel mom and dads are the parents of children killed by illegal aliens. This is the Sabine Durden Coulter story. Defend the border, save lives. Um, this gentleman right here saved my life. Yeah, and I, I remember telling you that story in 2015. I was ready to take myself out after losing my only child. When I saw you come down the escalator, and I went there to the right. same spot, visited last year, okay. um, and you came down and you talked about running for president, and I watched, and then you mentioned legal immigration. And I dropped to my knees, and I thank God for you. You're the reason I'm still here, along with God. And this guy, well, he yeah, became sure. a real good friend, so yeah. thank you, sir. Thank you very much, you take care for of all you. All you. The reason I get so angry it's because I've seen a lot of children die on the border, and Sabine lost her son. And I met Sabine when I was ICE director. I met a lot of ancient moms. I never get easier. I, I'm only three years, I still tear up. I have that effect, don't you? This lady served a price That's right. for this government's lack of securing our border. So I love you. I love her that she keeps on going out there and telling her story. I think that John Delemme made her famous <laughs> in four times many stages, and she's getting better all the time. She used to be a little shy. She's not anymore. So I love you. I appreciate your story, and my um, heart goes out to you for every day. And there's an angel mom born at least once a week in this country. Think about that. For you moms in here, think about it. There's moms that are going to get a phone call tomorrow that they lost their child. To some of us here legally. So God bless you. Have at it. Thank you. Um, I'm Sabina Durden Coulter. I'm also known as Dom's mom. This is my guy right here, called himself German Chocolate. So he was born in Germany and half of him was black. And um, I'm also a legal immigrant. I came like Ziggy through the front door filled out tons of paperwork, paid a lot of money, and I showed my love for this country and I've proven that I belong here. And I became a citizen. And I'm, uh, the flag means the world even more so now because my son's casket was covered. He was covered at the accident scene with uh, a flag and then his coffin. Let me tell you a moment about Dominic. Dominic was my only child. Ah, oh, there he is with his beloved dog. Um, my only child, 30 years old. A young man that lived 30 years, like some people don't do in 100 years. Not only was he an amazing mama's boy, proud, because we were best of friends, we shared a household, got divorced from his dad, and so the two of us rode motorcycles. Then he became a pilot, and he had a little Cessna, and we flew, and we went to Germany, visit Oma and Opa and in the meantime he volunteered in our town in Moreno Valley, California, became volunteer of the year. He then found his love for law enforcement so he became a dispatcher for the sheriff's department in Riverside. His hip was a little messed up so he couldn't join the police department for a while but he started to study to become a motorcycle cop and his final goal was to become a helicopter pilot. Life was great. I had the best child. We pranked each other. We just enjoyed life. And on J July 12th, we're going on 10 years, July 12th, 2012, he was on his way to work on his motorcycle. I was in Atlanta with my now husband for a family reunion. And the night before, he took us to the airport and I hugged him, kissed him, got my I love you. He got gave me a big old hug, and as I watched him walk to his car, I, I thank God I didn't know it was the last time I would see my child alive. At 5.45 a.m. in Atlanta, as I'm leaving a breakfast place, because it was too early to go anywhere, I lost all feeling in my legs, and I just dropped. And my husband thought, what's wrong, jet lag now? It was the exact moment my child died. So the connection we have with our children and all you parents, you know when something's not right. And I got that hor horrific call when Dominic's boss called me and told me, I'm so sorry to let you know Dominic got killed. 
my world ended, my life shattered. I had no clue how to deal with this life without my son. We flew back. At first I didn't know it was an illegal. I thought it was just an accident. Come to find out, it was an illegal alien that was protected by the Riverside DA, by a judge. He had been arrested for two felonies, armed robbery, grand theft. I mean, not little things, big things. Two DUIs, no license, no insurance. And they let him go. Five weeks prior to killing my son, they had him. And nobody did anything. And to top it off, the judge made a deal with him. He, for a guilty sentence, for, for pleading guilty, he gave him nine months and five-year probation, a misdemeanor without gross negligence. Criminal. Absolutely criminal. And the guy served. And get ready, 35 days. Oh. 35 days. And that's when I started to learn that illegal, a illegal aliens have more rights here than they do than Americans do. Because if any one of us drives drunk and kills somebody, you're gone. I own your house, your boat, everything you have. Illegals, eh, slap on the wrist. I, I try to tell people about it, but I lost family members, I lost friends, they didn't want to hear about it. I've been called racist, and I'm like, okay, look at my child. Try, try something better. And, but nobody wanted to hear about it. And I started, and as I said to President Trump, I started getting suicidal. I had my plan. I was going to take myself out, and I saw him coming down the escalator. His sentence changed my life, and I knew something bigger was coming my way. I just didn't know how big. I didn't know that one day the campaign would call and say, well, Mr. Trump would like to meet you, and I hung up. I thought it was a prank, but it wasn't. So I got to meet President Trump, well, candidate Trump, 2015. And back then, believe me, this microphone in front of my face would have had me just shut down, shaking. I wouldn't have been able to speak. But he listened to my story, and some other angel families were there. And he said, so the media doesn't want to tell your story, huh? No. Okay, come with me. So he walked in front of us. He was gliding. He wasn't walking. He's just hovering. <laughs> yeah. Into a room full of media, and he told them, he said, well, now you're going to have to listen. And he tapped me on my shoulder and said, go ahead, honey, tell your story. And I'm like, I don't know. I... But once I stood behind the podium, I felt my son's hands. And I heard his voice say, Mom, now or never. And from that day on, I got to share what an amazing man he was and still is. His friends still celebrate his birthday 10 years later. They named babies after him. And through being out there talking about him more and more, getting to speak at the RNC in Cleveland 2016, been invited by President Trump to the inauguration, been in the White House. He gave my son and so many other victims a voice. And then I met Tom. And he was adopted as my big brother, and you know, he couldn't shake me. I'm, well, we're walk he's walking like this, because I'm hanging onto his leg wherever he goes. And we developed a friendship and a trust, so he can call me middle of the night, say, listen, I need you in D.C. next week, and I'm okay. When, what time, and so forth. Um, I met incredible people here that have been friends that turned into family. Guys, um, and you guys keep sharing Dominic's story. They wear the bracelet, they, they remember the Dom's mom, and then I met the Chexit girls. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> and we became friends. And then I got the call to please come out here. Um, this issue is deadly important. You don't want pictures of your loved one and talk about them in past tense. I will never be a grandmother. He couldn't walk me down the aisle. I have his ashes in my locket. He's always with me. 
But this issue is too serious, and it's not just about death, but it's about all your hard-earned money is being spent on illegals. They live better than some of the people out there. And then they, they work on your emotions with all oh, these children. Uh, okay, I'm sure if I walk outside of here, I'm going to find some children that could use a helping hand, that could use a better school, a better home, food. And that's why I love President Trump, because he did the America's first. Because in your home, you take care of your family first. You don't go down the street, clean up their house, feed their children, while you go home, starve your children, beat them, and live in a dirty, dirty, rundown house. No, you take care of yours first. Um, schools. Okay, here, here's just a little example. You heard of these children being trafficked. So this 10-year-old boy, they come across the things they experience on their track over. Your mind wouldn't want you to go there. The horrific rapes, abuse, and so forth. So this little guy, this young man now, comes to America because, you know, we, we got to take care of all the children, not our own, but them. And then he goes to school with your daughter, with your son. Hurt people hurt people. And the best thing we can do, and that's why I love Tom and I love this project, we need to shut this down. We have to. We can't afford it anymore. Now we got food shortages by this airbrain in DC, <laughs> created by him, but now it's Putin. Um, well, but he's invited already three million in since he's been in office. Three million that we know about. We know about the getaway, gotaways that nobody counts. This affects each one of us, no matter where we live, no matter how well we live. They're coming. They're getting free airline tickets. I sat next to them on a flight to New York and I had to chew on the front seat because <laughs> I almost wanted to scream at somebody. So they're traveling everywhere. They come into your neighborhood. And if we don't stand up for our children, for our country, we're losing this. And, and please don't be afraid to call them illegal aliens because right. it's not a racist issue. It's, it's a legal term. It, illegal alien is not a race to start with. So help out. Donate as much as you can. Let's, let's get this project going. My mom is now with my Dominic in heaven. That was his little plane. And let's put an end to it. And let this be past tense so we never have to meet another angel mom and another angel dad. Thank you. Thank you.